to episode 52 of Book Manga Burning 15 with Everton. Looking back, it's the 8th of May 2022, and uh, we've got the last match of the season uh, today for, for you guys at home to Bournemouth, who are sitting last and have already been relegated uh, quite easily as well. So hopefully we can win it uh, to, I suppose, to end a really disappointing season on a bit of a high, because it has been a disappointing season. It was a disappointing season before I took charge, and to be honest, I haven't been able to really turn it around, as, as you've seen from the last few um, live commentaries, I've been quite annoyed, we had the 3-0 loss to Spurs, which is terrible, and then we lost 2-0 to Liverpool in the Merseyside Derby, which isn't ideal either, uh, and we showed no passion within those games, so um, I suppose the fixture since then, though, has got, been a little better, uh, based on a bit of a tactical uh, shake-up, so. So that was the last game you saw, and as you can see, in the next six games, we've won three, drawn one, and lost two, which isn't too bad, considering the two losses were against two teams that I think we were expected to lose to. But anyway, I'll, I'll quickly uh, show you through the tactic, and what I've actually done is I've gone to a formation which is very similar to the one we uh, played, um, what was I going to say, we were using in the AC Milan series, which actually helps us get out of a little bit of a rut there. At the moment it's a little bit of a short term fix, but hopefully like if you get the right players to play this sort of formation it can work quite quite nicely for you. So it's kind of the uh, three uh, three centre backs and the two complete wing backs, two uh, bowling midfielder, a box to box, a track with these to playing behind a deep line forward support and a poacher. And as you can see though it has it has made a, a better difference, a uh, better impact on the team. But we did start off with a 2-1 defeat to Chelsea, which was a really, really harsh result. Uh, they like they had, as, as you'd expect, more chances. Uh, nine clear-cut chances. We had four ourselves, so it was a crazy game. And for it to only finish 2-1 was actually quite odd. They had five clear-cut, or half chances as well. So they, they did create a lot, but we took the lead in the 42nd minute through Brendan Galloway, going from free kick. Well, that was happy days. Eden Hazard equalised in the 66th minute after a prolonged spell of pressure, which I suppose was expected. But a real kick in the teeth. Oscar scoring in the 90th minute uh, from a big cross in. He arrived at the back post. Still looks an absolute assassin, doesn't he? Yeah, even at 30 years of age. And he scored to really break our hearts because he played so well in this game. And we deserved to take a point. Like even though they had, they created more. Like our fight deserved us to get a point. But it kind of summed up the form we were in that we couldn't get anything from that game. But I suppose it was more positive signs. We put up a better effort. We looked more like scoring goals. And um, I knew in the long run against weaker opposition that was that was probably going to end up going into our favour. And that was completely right as we travel to Nottingham Forest, um, the Brian Clough Stadium it's now called. And we managed to win 3-1. Um, and we managed to have a game against Notts Forest where uh, Brita Sombolanda didn't score, uh, which is a bit odd. Marco Lavaggia opened the scoring for us in the 28th minute uh, before Isaiah Brown doubled the lead on the stroke of half time. Oh no, he didn't actually. Jason Wright equalised in the 44th minute. And then Isaiah Brown gave us the lead again on the stroke of half time. Um, to make it 2 1. And uh, it was getting a little nervous. The, the game was kind of going going through the motions a little bit. James McCarthy then got injured in the 74th minute. But Marco Lavaggia made sure the points were coming back to Goodison Park with a goal in the 77th minute. Um, and we couldn't fuck it up from there. It was almost impossible. Quite even. Um, Statistically in this game, but um, we, we, we were just more clinical in front of goal. Finally, we, we were the ones more clinical. And as you can see, that was our first win since the 22nd of January. And our only our second league win in charge. Our first league win in over two and a half months. And then we played at home to Stoke and we managed to make a back-to-back -back win. It's like the buses. When one comes, the second one comes straight after. And we managed to win 3-1. Brendan Galloway, uh, again scoring, I think, from a 
free kick, yeah, in the eighth minute. Isaiah Brown oh, uh, doubled the scoring in the 54th minute, continuing his excellent run of form. It's from a goal this year. Philip Billing did uh, bring him back in the 69th minute, just so we we weren't going to get through the, anything um, too easily. But then Isaiah Brown made it 3 1 in the 77th minute. Just happy days because, again, it just settled the pressure in the last 10 minutes so we didn't have to go through any uh, last minute turmoil. Which has happened I, again. Th this game we did have the edge, and three one was probably a fair enough scoreline when you look um, when you look at the statistics for it. And I think Stoke Stoke were okay, but they weren't quite there. And then we travelled to Villa Park, uh, the old stomping ground, and we suffered what was a really really harsh two one defeat. It really was. Federico Bravo gave them the lead in the 21st minute, and to be fair, in the first half, they absolutely battered us. But in the second half, we came out all guns blazing, and we had chance after chance after chance, but we couldn't take any of them before Marco Lavaggia finally pulled it in the back of the net in the 81st minute to give us a well-deserved equaliser, and I was thinking a well-deserved point. But then, this guy turned up, Vinny Doherty, who I've never heard of, a 17 year old Irishman was heading of seven, finishing of eight. Look at that, holy shit! And yet he piped up in the 92nd minute from a corner, rose, rose above all of our defenders, and headed it in, which was really a piss take and a half because they had five clear cut chances to their three, 53% of the ball, 19 shots. Yet we lost the game too. It was a real kick in the teeth, especially against the old employers. Would have loved to have got one over, uh, got one over them, but in the end, it wasn't to be. Then played at home to Hull and played out one of the most dire games on foot on this say with Heifer. It was nil nil. Uh, you may look at the stats and think that we deserved to win, but well, I think we did, but. Well, did we really? There was one clear-cut chance each. They had two half chances to our one, despite only having five shots. We had 20 shots to their five, but had only one clear-cut chance. Hit the woodwork once, at 57% of the ball, but it was back to one of those days uh, where you, where I've gotten in previous previous games where we just didn't create anything. And um, Isaiah Brown was having one of his off days, which means uh, pretty much no goals are ever going to be put in, it seems. He seems to be really our only goal scorer. And that was shown in this game away at Wigan, which was the penultimate game of the season. And it was an absolute... I just don't know what happens. I really don't. Jacob Murphy gave us the lead in the 26th minute. And I'm thinking, good stuff. Uh, one nil up. Isaiah Brown made it two in the 31st minute, uh, continuing his decent run of form. And then scored a goal immediately after in the 32nd minute to make it 3-1, or 3 nil even. I was thinking, bloody hell, that's fantastic. Then we got a fairly controversial penalty, I'll admit to that, in the 44th minute, which Isaiah Brown tucked it away for a half-trick. But he wasn't, done, he wasn't done for the half, as he scored in added on time in the first half, in the 46th minute to back his fourth and our fifth of the half. Thorgan Vorven, Thorgair Borven even, uh, pulled him back in the 51st minute to make it 5-1. But it just wasn't enough. We, we absolutely battered him. Uh, and I don't know what happened. Like, we he had four clear-cut chances, only one half chance. So we, we were just so clinical. Isaiah Brown had an absolute stormer, 9.8 rating for him. And two of the goals, uh, the first two goals, in fact, were just absolute fantastic strikes. Uh, which I think might have lifted him either to the second top score in the league or possibly even the top. But anyway, with these recent results, we've managed to uh, get up to 14th. As you can see here, Isaiah Brown is now the second top scorer in the league with 21 goals, which is a good effort. We're not going to get relegated, none of that. We've never really... Like I have to say, just at the end of the last episode, was probably the closest we ever came to being dragged into it. At the moment, we're 14th, but we could still finish 17th. We could still finish 12th, but we still could finish 17th. So that, that shows you how much uh, it could change. 
Well, we'll end up having it probably this year, but 14 still, which is still a, a disappointment. Bournemouth, Fulham and Cardiff have all gone down. Bournemouth only with 22 points. It's been a fairly sad year for them. Only three wins in 37 games. Uh, only 28 goals scored as well, which isn't great. If we have a look at uh, the these ones ever like we were six worst not worst yeah least goal scorers uh, with only forty seven but we've not a bad defence actually we've had the sixth best defence with fifty one but it's just I think been the lack of goals which has really poor play um yeah, if we have a look at individual player stats for ourselves we're playing it um in case you've already sneaked a peek we are playing a um, much rotated team today given a few youngsters that run out anyway we've got Isaiah Brown who's got 24 goals Ravaja has nine he's had a decent enough effort Mick Ryan at four Castagna's four on their own uh, Galloway and Puente three Puente's finally back but he's I don't think he's fit to play in this game um, yeah could have real problems with injuries. Yeah, he is injury prone. Puente would be real a, a drawback for him because he's such a he is he's actually quite a good player. He is ninety four percent condition, and we might actually even think of chucking him on the bench. Uh, top provider Oliver has uh, managed to finally get a few under his belt. He's now got seven for the year, but still been very unimpressive. Lavaggio six, Bangura six, Puente and Tachia five apiece. Um, grading wise, Isaiah Brown seven point oh nine. Uh, McCarthy 7.05, Kutia 7.05, Harry Ann 7.02, Jacob Murphy has been 7.01. He finally has had a few decent enough games under his belt. Uh, he's going to go back to Man City. I don't think I'll be renewing any loans for him because he hasn't been world class or anything. But he was like, he was what the team needed, a little bit of a boost and um, a bit of depth, I suppose, in um, certain areas. I have already wrapped up because I I've, I've realised here financially we're not going to be good and I've already got it in my head that we're just not we're not going to get money to spend or that much money to spend like it wouldn't surprise me if we're given like two hundred k to spend which in the in the Premier League just isn't good enough so what I've done is I've gone out into the uh, Bosman market and tried to snap up a few uh, beauties which I think I've I've got a few absolute steals here I think already snapped up that are all joining uh, in July, 1st of July. Uh, probably the best of them is Marcelo Baragatti, who is a left winger from Roma. Can't believe they're letting this guy go. Looks an absolute stunning left winger. Uh, caps at Italy under 21 level. He's got uh, good technical uh, attributes where, where, where needed, you know, technique, first touch, dribbling, crossing corners. Uh, very good mental to go off the board and solid physical to go off the board as well. Just means he's an absolute um, solid bet. You know, start start uh, came through the Pisa youth academy actually. Went to Roma quite early on, but never really got a go in Roma, and um, didn't hasn't played this year whatsoever. So we've managed to pick him up. Uh, Mamadou Torre, uh, he's joining as well. He's already confirmed. He's a young keeper from Fiorentina. He is a Mali international, only one cap, so he's just going to be a backup keeper. Um, I know we have a backup keeper, but I suppose it's going to add a bit more depth, and I suppose uh, if he comes in and does a decent enough job, uh, we might be able to sell him on for a bit of a profit. And this one hasn't gone through yet, but hopefully it will, because I don't think there's any competitors for us. It's Stefano Denswil. Uh, he starts off the game quite young. So he's like he's 29 now, so I think he starts off the game at around 20 years old. He's been at Ajax for his whole career and has had solid performances across the board. He's a very good centre back and also play as a left back, I think, if uh, truly right. One cap for Holland. It's just a solid centre back and coming in on a free is quite a like even though he's going to be 29. Um, I think it, it's still very, very much worth the wait. He's only just turned 29. I think he was born on the 7th of May. Um, so he's only he's only just turned twenty nine. Well, hopefully those three will be decent enough signings. And as I say, because of the limited amount of money that I I think we'll get, I think they're probably decent enough transfers. So 
into the day we're going to be fine like um team we're going to go for is wilkinson and goal in the backup keeper asamoa at uh, left wing back besic uh, Callum McKenna, who I think I showed you in the last episode, is in our under 18. Like, quite tall, 15 year old centre back. Maximovic, Gorgia's right wing back, Galloway, and Threlfall, who's another 18 year old in the under 21s. He, they don't seem to rate too highly, but he looks actually quite good, in my opinion. Um, I think if you just have your division of midfielders, so I suppose they're rating him a little bit. Julian to start in the Czech Bautista role. Isaiah Brown is the deep line forward and Mick Ryan is the poacher. Isaiah Brown is usually the poacher and Murphy the deep line forward, but nonetheless, um, I switched him around to give Mick Ryan a go in probably a more preferred role for himself. Uh, we're going to have to change this a bit because I've been uh, playing with the goal replays in 3D lately. I, I might look into that in the future. Now, if you really would like to see that, um, I suppose drop a comment saying that that you would like to see it. I'm not sure. Like it is doable, but um, it just means it'll it'll take more time to upload, and also they might lag. Like um, considering sometimes that 2D classic lags uh, on the videos, which I really. It's disappointing. That's why I've kind of lowered the speed uh, on the highlights recently, so that there's n not as much chance of lag with Gorgia. Oh, maybe an early goal. No, it's cleared away. McKenna does well. Here's Galloway. I don't know whether this is just going to be a pointless highlight or whether it's going to actually event into something. Here's Asamoah does well from Besic. McKenna. Um, it's absolutely pointless hate those ones because you, you don't know whether they're pointless or whether there's suddenly going to be a goal come out of nowhere. It wasn't to be and it's been a fairly quiet first 20 minutes or so. Bournemouth not really um, entering this game yet. And it's been a difficult year for them um, and it doesn't seem to have changed too much today although they might have a chance here on the break. Here's Matt Ritchie. He's still with them. There, Bella Sabau. Louis, oh, Martinez is in behind and has blazed it over. That's a real chance for Bournemouth on the break. First clear cut chance of the game does fall Bournemouth's way, which is slightly worrying. It is Isaiah Brown if he can find the ball around the top. We're into Corchia now. Uh, Corchia, Mick Ryan, 1 0. And that is a good goal from Mick Ryan. He does frustrate me, Rick, Mick Ryan, though, because he doesn't score constant goals and he complains so much like he's one game out of the team or something why am i not playing first team football and he's not good like he's not good enough to be playing all the time like he'll score the odd goal but we need to be scoring more than a, an odd goal as a striker it's dreadful so saw his name in in the uh, papers and went for it but unfortunately it's, it's a bit of an anti-climax here's isaiah brown finds it to start like, if we really are struggling financially, I might have to ship a few guys off. I'm not sure who I would if Mick Ryan gets himself a second of the day. Uh, score. Uh, Corchia. It's another Corchia cross. Another Mick Ryan header. Uh, happy days, really. I think we've uh, taken a convincing 2-0 lead here. And already um, seem to have this game nearly wrapped up. Bournemouth just haven't really entered the game whatsoever. But I'm not sure who 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 kind of who goes like who is sacrificed in those sort of scenarios uh, when you need money. Um, I suppose I haven't become enough really acquainted with the squad. Like at at, at Villa, if I always had a plan on Smart Martinez is going to get another try, and it's a good save this time by Wilkinson. But he was offside in the last. So we're two 0 in at half time. So that's fantastic. Uh, but. As I was saying, you know, in Villa, I always had a constant kind of conveyor belt of people that I'd kind of offload next. Because there were, there were guys aging in the squad. Um, like, I just got rid of Roberto Pereira. And I'm not sure, now I'm not sure whether this had any bit of a difference, but would the selling of both Pereira and Acore damage team morale? 
Does T well T Morale, like I know, it was affected mostly by uh, that guy Cow being a bit of a cow to be honest. He was whinging and whinging. Despite him playing pretty much all the games I was in charge this year. But he wasn't having any of it. He was complaining and the whole squad was being brought down because of him. But uh, I'm not sure whether there was a little bit of a lasting effect that we got rid of two of the biggest stalwarts in the squad. of Bessic had some stupid play. He's just no. He's not going anywhere. And he's just tripped them up pointlessly. Uh, and Diapro Sacco, I think it's Diapro Sacco, uh, is going to step up and give Bournemouth a way into this game. And he has a good penalty. It's 2-1 now. And it's suddenly, like we've suddenly unnecessarily made this game difficult for ourselves by conceding again around the 70th minute mark. As we could have just closed this game out, won the game 2-0, and that's happy days. Instead now, we've got to try and search for another goal. And Isaiah Brown will be looking to uh, provide it for us, but he can't. There's Joseph Martinez. Suddenly I'm, I'm kind of worrying though, because we, we've already shown that we're susceptible to giving away a penalty. Uh, oh, fuck off. Fuck's sake, are you taking the piss out of me? Just sums up the season, doesn't it? Well, you guys don't really know because we haven't been playing it game by game, but trust me, this really does sum up the season. It's against last placed Bournemouth. And we've had a 2 0 lead as well. It's not like we've. Like they had just a good start or something, but they had a two. We had a two goal lead, and have fucked it up completely. Through, like the Bessage penalty, like oh holy shit! And is that what we're gonna finish the season on? Trailfall just booting it into touch. Like what was he trying to do there? I have no clue, but that's the end of the season. And no matter what the sort of financial position the team are in, I do believe we're going to have to have a, a huge re rejig of the squad um, this year. Because it just hasn't been good enough, really. McKenna, he didn't do bad, did he not? Uh, what did he get? 6.8, that's fine. Good work from a 15-year-old. Um, there was a new face. And six... I haven't signed six players, I've signed like two players. Yeah, I've signed two players, Guts and Murphy. So they are signed six, but anyway, that's the end of the season fun. Like we only get seven million or so for that, so we're still in the red a lot. But there's gonna have to be a big shake up shake up because there's a lot of jokers on this squad who are on high 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 wages as well. So we'll have to look offload and when the next episode will be the start of the new season hopefully it will be new uh, better fortune for us and i'll see you guys then hope you enjoyed the video if you did if you did give it a like and subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys later